Today, you're going to use Adobe's Color Guide built into Illustrator, as well as many other functions to create this awesome geometric design. Now let's waste no more time and make use of that color guide right away. So in Illustrator, press M for the rectangle tool and then make a square by holding down shift. We're going to choose the baseline color and it shouldn't be too dark or too light. So once you've chosen the color, come into window and color guide. With your square selected, hold down the Alt Option key, click and drag to duplicate the square. Then go ahead and press Command or Control D to repeat this process two more times. Adobe has taken your color and shown the tints, the shades, as well as some complementary colors as well. So from your base color, choose one hue that is darker, and this is going to be the shade. And then choose a tint, which will be a highlight and then also a third color that is vastly different from the first color. So now we have the colors, let's make a swatch group, but make sure it's a global swatch group. With all the colors selected, head into the swatches panel and then create a new color group right here and check the global colors option. Why are we gonna use global colors, you might ask? Well, when I duplicate this hue and I change it, as standard in Illustrator, it's only going to adjust that object's color. However, with the global colors activated, if we change the color in the swatches panel, every object that uses that hue is actually going to be adjusted. That might come in handy later for your design. So for the geometric design, we're going to want an isometric grid. There are some crucial steps that we need to take after the grid has been made, so do follow along carefully. For the grid, make a square that is slightly larger than the artboard. Then, come into the split grid option. You can experiment with how many columns you want to use, and for my design, I found that 50 was a pretty good number. And then of course, leave the other set to one. Ideally, this grid should be a dark color. And then when you're ready, copy it with Command or Control C. Once copied, press Command or Control F to paste the duplication right over the top. We can come into the Properties panel and simply rotate this copy by 60 degrees. This is why I love the Properties panel, it's got so many uses. And then finally, copy and paste it once more and reflect that duplication in the properties panel. So we have the grid ready for the design and I personally have the stroke weight really, really low. And this is so I can see my design a lot easier when I'm going to make it in the next steps. We have used this method before on this channel, but today there is a specific way to do things. So select the grid and then let's use the live bucket tool and click it once. We now can bring up the swatches that we made earlier using the Adobe Color Guide and then start to paint the design onto your grid. We're gonna work in a hexagonal manner and use the three main colors, each covering two sides of a six-sided hexagon. You can hold down shift and then click and drag to remain in a straight line. And if you do make a mistake, just press command or control Z. Or if you're English like me, command or control Z. Once you have the first hexagon complete, we're going to repeat the process, but to use the opposite colors. So with this dark purple, I'm gonna make another shape directly across from the original. This is going to represent the shadows and the highlights, which is why the Adobe Color Guide was so useful and so quick in generating the right colors for my design. So keep repeating this process of filling in two sides of a hexagon that have the opposite reflected hues until you're left with a hexagon in the middle of negative space. 
So in the middle section, I'm gonna grab a hue that is again the opposite color and fill in the section like so, whilst holding down shift to make things a lot easier and smoother. Now this needs to be done for all three sections of the inner shape, and this is going to give an illusion of a cuboid in the very center of the design. So why did we need that fourth contrasting color, you might be asking? Well, if we carry on experimenting with shadows and highlights, we can add the complementary color at the very end of these outstretched shapes. You really can have fun with this technique and use your creativity to make some really, really neat designs. Now the design is all well and good, but it's stuck on this isometric grid. How can we actually pull it off effectively? So to access the design, first select everything and then expand it in the drop down menu. Finally, come into the Pathfinder menu and use the Merge function. If you want to see more designs just like this tutorial, click one of these videos. And of course, if you want to keep boosting your skills as a graphic designer, do subscribe to my channel for weekly graphic design content. Until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.